Um, so hello everyone. So in this session, uh, we're going to learn about the distributed learning. Um, sorry, there's some noise from my side. Let me show another way. Okay. Um, so we're going to learn this uh, um, distributed training. Um, specifically, we'll talk about the data parallel deep learning. Um, of course, um, there are many kind of theoretical background or theory or any kind of knowledge about the data parallel training. But uh, in this, um, um, you can call it tutorial, I will basically kind of work you through um, in a code, kind of want to get, get our hands dirty to try to really implement uh, the code to make it run on supercomputer. Uh, so the example will be very simple. And this, is, this example is basically taken from Beth's uh, talk uh, this morning. It is an uh, MNIST example implemented by Keras. Um, so, so in this um, tutorial, the goal is to help, help you understand the data parallelization or model parallelization and can kind of get an understanding what are the pros and cons of different uh, parallelization schemes. And then uh, we will look at the code and, and specifically we'll take the code that um, Bethany used this morning and then modify it uh, with Horova. Uh, Horova is a, a framework for us to to do data parallelization. And this is a kind of very simple actually, um, compared to um, when you have a HPC application, like, you know, material science application or whatever application you have, and you want to parallelize it using MPI, that might take uh, more time. And this uh, parallelize the machine learning code or deep learning code using Horova is quite simple, as you will see later on. Um, and then we will kind of run this code on supercomputer. Um, specifically, we will run on Theta and Theta GPU. Um, okay, so um, before going to the actual uh, actual coding stuff, I just want to briefly, very briefly mention a little bit about the background of the deep, deep, um, data parallel deep learning. Um, so uh, the, the idea for all kinds of parallelization, um, whether using MPI or OpenP or whatever parallelization is to reduce the time to solution. And basically you have a, a gigantic, I mean, a, a job that cannot finish for one person. So you call uh, a lot of people work together in a coordinated way. And so it's all a matter of how you distribute the job and how to coordinate, how to coordinate in, in terms of this, um, HPC language is basically the communication uh, among the different workers, right? So, so same thing here in data parallel training. And this table you can see, this is taken from one of the paper in the archive. Um, you can see the training time for the ResNet 50 using uh, the ImageNet dataset. So you can see that in 2016, they were using eight uh, P100 NVIDIA GPU, and it takes uh, it took uh, 29 hours. That means if you use one GPU, uh, it will take about 10 days, 10 days, right? And then in 2019, they used about 2,000 V100 GPU. Um, it took only about 1.2 minutes. So this is a dramatic improvement from from using one GPU it takes about like weeks of times to minutes of times, right? So this dramatic improvement just uh, kind of accelerate the speed of the scientific discovery. Um, and, and it's kind of, uh, we are allowed to do more things if, if the training time takes only minutes or hours of time, right? We can, we can do a hyperparameter search or you know, arch architecture search we can find out the best uh, have a parameter of best neural architectures to certain problems. Um, but before that, we just use our laptop or desktop, we were really, we really cannot do that. 
So that's the kind of main motivation you can say that uh, in pushing this uh, deep learning to HPC. And, it's, and of course, in, in traditional scientific um, computing, we have been using this uh, supercomputer for, for traditional HPC simulation. So it's kind of not a big uh, uh, I mean, change to, to push this deep learning on this uh, HPC environment also. And then regarding this, uh, how to parallelize the deep learning, uh, they essentially have two big um, category, although there's some hybrid kind of intermediate um, parallelization scheme, uh, which was, which I don't want to go into too much detail, but basically if you look at this, uh, uh, the whole kind of picture, we can think about one is the model parallelization, the second is the data parallelization. I will just um, directly go to the plot here. Um, so the left-hand side is the uh, model parallelization and the right-hand side, the data parallelization. So for the model parallelization, uh, it basically just, um, split the, the whole neuron architecture into different pieces. Um, different pieces means uh, different neurons um, and also the data associated to the neurons that the ways and bias. Um, so this will be done on different processes or different, different CPU or different GPU. And they will um, do all the computation, like the convolutions or activation, whatever computation involved in the deep learning, um, it will be done in uh, concurrently in different uh, GPU or CPU. Um, then there's also the communications uh, among those uh, different GPU. For example, the the data, the output of this neuron need to go to the input of the of this layer, right? But this neuron is in um, worker too, so there is a the communication involved. Um, but so overall, in, in terms of para, um, parallelization, what people really cared about is the two important thing. One is associated to the computations. It's basically whether the computation is load balanced or not, that whether the different workers get the same amount of um, work or not, right? So for this, for the model parallelization, it's kind of relatively difficult to partition the neural network in a way that is a uh, low balance to all the workers. Uh, because uh, sometimes the neural architecture is, is quite complicated. So there's typically not a generic way that you can partition, partition this um, neural network equally. You know? So that's kind of a, a difficulty with respect to model parallelization. So it's really most like, I mean, mostly problem specific um, but there are some kind of problems that's easy to do model parallelization. Okay. And then in terms of communication, this communication is we really, we usually care about whether it's a local or global, you know, local means only, only a, a, a nearby um, processor or nearby GPU need to communicate within each other in a small group. Whereas the global means that the entire um, processor, uh, all the, all the, all the process in the MPI will come to communicate with each other, right? In, in this sense, the model parallelization, um, the communication overhead is relatively less than the, the other one, the data parallelization. Um, so this is kind of the, the advantage in a certain sense. And another thing is that if your model is too large, then even like one GPU cannot, cannot um, store the entire data, then you have to do this uh, uh, model parallelization, right? And I, I guess in future we will encounter such kind of big problem, big neural network. And but for for now, I mean, most of the models are kind of can fit into like GPU, single GPU, for example. In on theta GPU, we have about forty gigabyte um, memory per GPU. And some of the nodes has 80, 80 gigabytes. So it's kind of quite good um, to fit, to, to be able to stay the entire neural network. Um, and then so for the data parallelization is basically each worker have a independent copy of the entire neural network. Um, and it works on the a subset of the data set. Um, 
So for example, worker one only work on part of the data set and do the update, uh, do calculate the um, gradients, loss, and then at each step, at the end of each step, they have to communicate uh, with each other. All the workers have to communicate with each other to average the gradients and loss. Then after that, they know how to do the update, how to update the gradients in next step, right? So there is a communication involved and this communication, it's global, it's a collective, uh, um, they told you will see that it's a collective or reduced uh, um, operation. So this is the overhead involved um, in this. But the, compared to the model prioritization, this data prioritization is very easy to implement, right? And um, you just, um, all the workers have a copy of the ways and bias and neurons or whatever, you know, and then they just uh, fit, we just fit in the uh, workers with different, um, different data set, um, different part of the data set and then do the MBI communication, okay? And so this has been the kind of the dominant, I would say the dominant um, prioritization scheme that currently uh, we've been using. Um, and then there's a, a framework or software package called Horva um, for doing this data prioritization. Um, this is a schematic um, part of the whole process. It is basically what I have described that each worker have a, a copy of the entire model then they calculate gradients based on the subset of the data. And, and then after that, all the workers doing average of the gradients, then they propose an update of the model in next step. Okay. And these are the reference, um, the papers related to Horowa. I want to point mention uh, about the training that we did um, previously. There is a YouTube video. Um, this is a talk I gave um, previously, give a kind of a more detailed um, explanation of the uh, data prioritization and also involve uh, other kind of prioritization and, and some theory behind that. You know, if you're interested, you can check this video. And then uh, this is the SDL workshop uh, materials um, last year, I think. Uh, so you can also check that they also have um, a lot more um, hands-on examples um, compared to this one, okay? So you can check after that. Um, okay, and then, so now we can kind of see how, how to do this uh, data prioritization, basically how to modify the code, right? I summarize as the, seven step or sometimes uh, with eight step. But basically these are the uh, things that these are the things that we need to modify. It's very simple. Each one of them is just one or two lines, of course. Right? And, and so I will just uh, go through them uh, all at once and then we, we can go to the code um, to, to do the actual work. Okay, the first step is just to import the horrible modular and in your Python code, in the beginning of your code, and then do the horrible in initialization, more like an MPI in NIT to set up the MPI uh, environment, right? The second is to tell the each worker, each worker, what are the resources that they're going to use, like basically pin the GPU to each worker, right? Like uh, worker zero use GPU zero, worker one use GPU one and you will know how to do that in the code. The third thing is that we need to scale the learning rate. Uh, the, the idea behind that is that previously we use one worker, uh, each step consume a batch of data. Now we have more workers. So each step we consume more data, right? So the step size is larger. That's why this skin, the learning rate is basically a, a kind of step size, um, a time step size in, in the optimization, right? So we have to kind of increase that proportionally. Um, and then uh, the first step is to, to define a distributed optimizer. So the initial optimizer, they only calculate the gradient and then the, the loss in the gradient, right? And then the proposed update. Um, the distributed version will 
will calculate a uh, gradient and loss with respect to the data they see, and then do a or, or reduce, do an average, right? And so this is basically what it does. And then five is a broadcast the data, the model parameters or optimization optimizes parameters to the other rank from rank zero. So we want to make sure that all the workers have the same copy of the neural net model, right? Other, otherwise they will go to different places. And so this, this is the idea. And then six is regarding the IO. So, so because you have, we have uh, multiple workers and we want to make sure that they, they don't compete with each other in writing data, right? And also sometimes in reading data. Um, so specific for the checkpointing, uh, when you want to checkpoint, you write the, uh, a copy of the model at each epoch, then we want we just want to rent zero to do that, right? It, this is basically you put an if statement, right? If if rank equal to zero, then you do the checkpointing. Other rank just do not do the check checkpointing stuff. Then lastly, is regarding the data set. Um, or so because in the data parallel training, we want to make sure that the worker, each worker only work on part of the data set, not the entire data set, right? But before it, the worker, um, like if you do a unparalleled training, then you just, the worker will, will sweep through the whole entire data set, right? So there is a little bit of work um, you need to do for, for this. We will show the examples, okay? And then on the, on the GitHub repo, we provide two examples uh, one is the TensorFlow with Horova, the other is a Keras with Horova. So in this example, I, I will just go through the one of the example. Um, so I, what I will do is that I will share another screen. Okay, so if you, if you can go to, um, you can clone, I, I think if you have the local copy of this uh, GitHub repo, you can um, go to this, uh, uh, this zero two distributed train uh, learning, and then the code are basically here. Uh, these are the two example uh, in, in Bethany's uh, ex um, tutorial this morning, she provided one with concise, uh, basically the, using the Keras uh, model feed and model, comp model compare model feed, right? The other is um, go to a little bit more detail, like each step you calculate the loss and calculate the update, uh, update the gradients. So I have this, um, both of the example here. Uh, so maybe I can, we can just see the code, uh, the unique, original code from Bethany. This is the original code from Bethany. I did a little bit kind of tun tuning stuff, as a little bit more stuff here, but basically it's a kind of direct conversion from Bethany's uh, Python notebook into a Python script. Um, so in, in, in all this um, kind of machine learning code, well, really we have is that first is the data set, right? This is the data set loading the empty data set. And then this is the model. Um, so in this model is very simple, just uh, composed of a um, couple convolutional 2D layers and dense layers and a bunch, a uh, couple dropout layers and back pooling layers. And this is the, this is the forward pass when you have an input and then how it, generate the output, right? This is how we define this model. Um, and, and so this concise version is basically just use the Keras uh, framework that like you do model fit and then little, little com, com, uh, model compile and then do model fit, right? And then then you you do, then, then you specify all the, the epochs and batch size and do the training, right? Um, so three components, um, data set, model, training, right? And so what I will do is I want to make a copy of this. Uh, concise, right? Uh, okay, it's concise. 
I will just um, okay, working copy. Okay, so this is the code. And so we can go step by step um, to, if you want to follow me, you can also do it on your laptop or whatever, you know, and then later on, you should be able to um, do that. Okay, the first step is to initialize the horror bar. Uh, that you can, we can put that in the beginning. Um, so basically in horror, horror bar, and specifically this is the error. Uh, so it will be like this in port s over, right? And then initialize is kind of MPI in date. So usually what I will do is that I, I want to uh, say that I'm ranked something of something, right? So, and then so I will print out the rank for this and then Okay, this is the first step. Let me uh, mark here. First step, initialize everything. Second step is to is to set this uh, um, pin the GPU to to specific rank. Right, this is here. So uh, this line already lists out all the GPU that we have in this uh, in the system. So uh, so step which is some um, pin GPU and there's a function in this uh, TensorFlow. Um, yeah, I'm I'm actually checking now that I, I remember all the function. I actually have a, another another browser open up side by side. So in case I forgot the function, then uh, I can look it up. Okay, so basically you can also do this. Okay, this is a function just set the visible device, right? And, and how, sorry, how about local rank. This local rank, rank ID is, uh, for example, if I have 1,000, 1,000 GPU, right? The rank ID will be from zero to 999. And the local rank will be from zero to five. For example, if you use a six rank per node, a six processor per, per node. Uh, so that's why we, we use this um, local rank instead of the, the, the total rank uh, ID, right? The global rank ID. Um, so this is specified as a GPU. So this uh, code basically ping the GPU to each process. And then we will, we will scale the, uh, let me, okay, we will, scale the learning rate. We need to find out where is the learning rate in the model, right? So, okay, so this here in Python is called the training network concise. And so this is the learning rate um, specified. The learning rate usually specified in the, in the optimizer. Um, so in this initial call, this optimizer is defined here, like optimizer equal to Adam, right? Um, but I need to make a change. I need to define an optimizer as an object, um, then pass it into the model so, so that I can do define up, uh, the uh, distributed version of the optimizer. So, but okay. and then, then I define the learning rate, right? I have to scale the learning rate, um, learning rate by by the total number of worker. Okay. Um, then this is the this is step three. Step four is to um, set a distributed optimizer. Right. So this the this one is the the initial optimizer. Now I have to do a distributed version. This is easy, very easy in the horror framework. It just wrap this uh, wrap this optimizer like this. Redefine this as a of a distributed optimizer and specify this in the original optimizer as an input. Okay, this is step. Four. 
then I have to pass this uh, optimizer, the distributed optimizer into this uh, model compile function, right? Um, then step five is a little bit complicated <laughs> for this uh, for this particular example. For other like TensorFlow with Corova is easier. For Carousel with for this is a little bit complicated, but but not to it. But this case, basically, we have to define a so-called callbacks in the Carousel framework. Uh, callback is basically tell the tell the this um model whenever um, they begin a training, what kind of operation they need to do. And at the end of each epoch, what kind of operation they need to do, right? So, so I will just uh, specify this uh, three operation here in this example. Uh, first is to do the broadcast in the beginning. Broadcast global, variable go back okay this is from rank zero broadcast to all the other rank the second thing we need to do is to average the metric this is not uh, necessary only if you want to print out the uh print out the um like Accuracy, accuracy and loss at each each step or each epoch, right? It, it, it doesn't have impact on the on the overall training. You know, it's just um, for us to, to have a kind of input because only each worker have only their their own accuracy or loss, right? Um, but we want to when we do print out, we want to look at the 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 average. Um, accuracy among all the worker. Um, then the third thing um, is re re regarding this uh, so-called warm-up step. Uh, I, I don't want to, yeah, I will explain this a little bit. Uh, the, the reason is that when we scale the learning rate, um, the learning rate is larger, right? Larger, then the training become unstable sometimes. So in the beginning, we would like to use a smaller learning rate. Um, so in this example, for example, in this example, I'm setting the warm up equal to be three. That means that in the first three epochs, I will just use a initial learning rate. The initial learning rate means that uh, I don't scale learning rate, right? So this you it can be any value, just smaller than even smaller than than this uh, initial learning rate, right? But the, the the key thing is that I don't scale the learning rate. Um, so this will be a smaller learning rate, so that the training will be stable uh, in the beginning. Um, okay, and I have to pass pass this uh, to um, this uh, compile basically callbacks so make sure that it actually did do this um then here i don't have the checkpoint right if you do checkpoint you can you can specify only rank zero to do that um but I, the other thing i want to specify here is that the doing the block stuff right point out like usually in this uh keras you can specify the model level um, a verbal level zero means that don't bring out anything. Um, two means bring out certain information, and you can check other levels. So here I just uh, set up set the verbal level but for rank zero. Print out the information that the each step, how long it takes, um, the accuracy loss, for example. Uh, but for other ranks, it keeps silence so that it won't kind of the message you the print out in the standard output will not mess up, right? Um, I think that's it. Okay, so then the seventh step is to do regarding loading a data set. So by default, as I mentioned, the every worker will work um, the entire data set, right? Um, in order to 
to, to make only part of the data set for each worker, I just I need to specify each epoch, uh, time per epoch um, will be smaller, right? Initially, this M lake example, I believe it has 60,000 divided by the batch size is the number of steps per epoch, right? The total number of steps per epoch. Okay, so because I have uh, more number of workers to do the work, so the time per epoch should be smaller, right? So this will make sure that, okay, worker zero, um, for example, if I have um, 10, 10 workers, right? So worker zero get 10 mini, mini batch, worker one, 10 mini batch, and um, I mean, several. So, worker zero only get one tenth of the data, basically one tenth of the data set. Um, say that if they need to one, if they need one hundred step to to sweep over the entire data set, then worker zero just go ten step. Then for sure, it would only take one tenth of the data set, right? And and this ten worker together, hopefully, will cover the entire data set. I say hopefully means that right now I'm relying on the London, London C to do the work, right? And basically worker zero take randomly from one tenth. The other, the other workers also take randomly. They might have some overlap, right? Uh, you, this is just kind of a simple way of doing this. If you want to make sure that all these 10 workers doesn't have any overlap, then you can manually partition the data set that to make sure that worker zero only work on that, that the first one tenth worker one on, on the second one tenth, that can be done, right? If we are interested, we can talk later. You can, we can talk offline. Uh, but for simplicity, we'll just um, rely on the, on the random process to, to kind of cover, cover the entire data set. Okay, uh, this is the seventh step. Okay, um, I think we we finish modifying the code. Okay, and actual thing is I want to make sure uh, only rank zero print out the root of print out. Right, this should work. Uh, we can test that. Okay, so it's not too complicated, right? Each each one of the items just uh, has a few, just one or two lines. Uh, okay, I will I will test this. So this is a working copy, right? Working copy. This is a document that I have I mean, in the code that I modify. So now we want to run that. Um, I in this uh, the left hand side can just evaluate the performance. This is a way to, to, to SSS to Theta GPU and run, um, actually this should be four naught. The Q should be four naught. I, I need to mod, mod, modify that data. Um, so the account is here. So it, it, except this one should be modified as uh, um, for node, other, other, other things work here, the command. And after that, we set up the environment. Um, this is just a set up the some tens, um, TensorFlow modular uh, environment. Okay, after that, then we can do this, uh, run this example. Okay, um, so I already do this, uh, but I, for the sake of Example, I will do so. I, I here I finished the first step already SSH to theta, and then I will do this. You might okay. want to refresh your um, page. I think it's actually already fixed this queue no, uh, full node on the online. You might want to refresh your web page. Oh, web page? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I believe I remember I fixed <laughs> so. Uh, where is it? Okay, here, yeah, yeah. Uh, full not full not right? So, okay, uh, after SSG to set a GPU login now, then we can do this, right? 
you only need to make one note to do the example, okay? Uh, and 20 minutes should be enough. I, I think I'll just uh, put here, since I already have a note uh, working. So this is after, after you get allocated with this uh, one, one node, then you can CD to this uh, directory, right? Um, then you, you can do all this command to set up this environment. When you see uh, something base in front of that, this is a virtual environment. That means that uh, the environment setup is uh, working now. Uh, to, in order to check, you can see whether there is a TensorFlow package. For example, I do uh, Python import TensorFlow STF, right? Um, okay, so TensorFlow is there. Okay, I'll kill this. Uh, okay, I will go directory run this example. Okay, MPI run. Uh, let me do like two worker working copy, right? This is uh, the code you just have. I'm not sure whether we have some error or not. Uh, if it's, we can fix that. Okay, so we need to kind of wait a while. Maybe if it's, uh, for the first time, it will load this um, TensorFlow modular it might, into the memory, so it might take time. Um, and, and actually in this, all the, in the call, I turned off this uh, TensorFlow warning message or log message. Um, so that's why you don't see anything here right now, but maybe later on we will see some messages right now. So we just wait here. Um, then let's see. Okay, still, still waiting. So if you cannot, cannot, okay. Okay, so it looks like there's an error with the, some typo, most likely some typo with the code. Uh, let me see. In very key. So it looks like there's some typo. Um, I think it was in the compile call. Optimizer. Let me check the the one I did previously. Oh, actually, I see the callback should be should be in in the feed instead of instead of in the in the compile callback and verbals callback and verbals yeah. Yeah, okay, and compiles. Um, actually, as I was checking, um, also in the compile, we have to make a make some change to this and to disable the run tens of ten tier function within its compile. Um, this is uh, documented by the Horova, so. Um, so let's run again. Um, and okay, for some reason still, okay. It's step for EPO, another. This should be step for EPO.
Okay, this is a challenging thing. So I don't, if I do it kind of online, will I do it? Okay, good. So it works now. So you can see the printout, right? I'm rank zero of two, rank one of two. And then I'm actually setting 20 epochs. You will see that the first epoch takes time, right? First epoch because it's initialization. And then the 20 is in total 20 epoch. And so, uh, and let me make some modification. Uh, all of our range, actually this, this bracket here. I want to kind of separate out the first epoch. Setting this to be one. So I run the first epoch first and then run 20 epochs after that. So I can I can see the time for the for the other 20 epochs. And so you can see that second time we run this uh, is a little bit faster. The loading the TensorFlow module um, it doesn't take too much time because it's already wrote in the memory. This is using two two worker, right? 20 epoch. Okay, uh, so two worker takes uh, 8.6 um, second. So right? we can do four worker. This is will be using four GPU. Um, ideally, you should reduce the time to something like 4.5 second. Um, so for worker, again, you can check here. Okay, okay, 3.72, right? So that's kind of closer. Uh, so that means that indeed it reduced the time to solution. We can further increase to A in total. On each node, we have A GPU. Yeah, I actually, I should kind of print out that the Renzi will print out this. Okay, so it further reduced to 2.2, .2, right? Um, so that's the idea. So by using more workers, uh, the time to solution is reduced. Um, of course, uh, there is an overhead of introducing more com communication, like MPIO reduced, right? So some model, if the model is small, like for example, in this and this example is quite small, then we cannot scale to thousands of GPU, right? Uh, because the, then the communication will be dominant. Um, but for some simple, I mean, for more complicated models, because the computation um, will be heavy, then we can scale to uh, more GPU, okay? Um, thing, okay. Um, so this, we're about to finish this session. So I will just uh, mention a little bit about other things that you can test. Um, you can also run on, on Theta KNL. Uh, the time will be, um, I mean, it will take a little bit longer time, but still doable. Um, not kind of, it, it probably 10 times slower than you do on, on Theta GPU. Uh, you can do the same thing. You can do the scaling test like from one node to, to a node um, and see the time. And then finally, we can also check uh, the, the communication overhead, right? Uh, later on after this, uh, after this uh, there will be a profiling um, thing. Um, but the, here I show that it's a kind of profiling, it's a called MPI profiling kind of check uh, what are the MPI communication involved in this, uh, in, in this uh, data power training. So, um, so there's a tool that you can use. Um, this is other command. Basically, you just, we just set the LD preload, though this MPI trace um, library and then run the same thing. Um, and, and then you, it will, it will uh, generate a file in your directory and open that file. It will tell you what are the MPI communications. So here, we have the rank size, this kind of basically horizontal rank, horizontal size. It will, under this, it will call these functions. And then we have broadcast, um, broadcast uh, the parameter from rank zero to other ranks. So that's why it show, show up here. 
and then it asks you help for all reduce, right? Um, in this example, the all reduce take about five seconds, and then the total time take about eighteen seconds. But actually, um, there are other overlook or reduce. This is a MPI profiling, so it only show the MPI or reduce. Uh, but since we are doing things on uh, in video pro platform, so there is actually so called leakage or reduce. Um, so if we check this, um, the the or reduce code, it will also show us the the message size, like four bytes, six bytes. These are very small bytes. And this all reduce is for, for so-called negotiating or reduce. Um, there's another profile profiling you can do is uh, so-called timeline. Horva timeline basically uh, shows when the the MPI communication or nickel communication happens, right? So again, it's very simple. You just specify this environment variable, tell the program what the JSON output is for this timeline. And then you can download this um, this uh, to, to your local machine and open that up with Chrome browser. Um, I have the instruction here, so you can do it later on. But I was just going to show the result here. So this is the, the timeline. And you can see this is a different time step, different time step, right? Each At the end of each time step, they do the communication. And there are two stage here. NEG, it doesn't show the whole word, it's called negotiating, negotiating or reduce. So this basically doing those are four bytes and 16 bytes uh, reduce. And there are other or reduce doing the actual communication or average of all those weights and bias. And this is done by nickel uh, or reduce in, in video platform, right? And it's about similar time uh, to each other. Right, the negotiating or reduce and then nickel or reduce. Nickel or reduce also have other things that like weight and copy the buffer, or whatever, you know. Copy the buffer is related to uh, other things, uh, horrible fusion. If you, yeah, if you, if you can check whole uh, website, they will mention that. Uh, uh, but for now, I don't want to um, confuse you so, by a lot too much information. Um, if you run on CPU, you can also the my code support support uh, running on CPU only. Right? You know, by default it will run on GPU, but if you specify the device to be CPU, well, let me make it a little bit small. To be CPU, then it will run on the host uh, instead of GPU. So if you run on the host, then it will take longer time. So this will be two point four seconds per epoch versus the uh, running on GPU is just 0 0.1 second per epoch, right? So this is the kind of 25 um, times uh, slower on um, CPU. Um, and then you can do the MPI profiling and you can see now it shows that the all reduced time is um, kind of close to the total time. Uh, it doesn't mean that the all reduced is dominant uh, because in horrible, the uh, communication and computation, they overlap with each other. Most of them overlap with each other. And But the thing is that you can see now, it actually have not just the four bytes and 16 bytes, it also have all the other uh, message size. So these are the actual ways and bias uh, um, communication. And you can see the time sp um, spent for, for doing this actual um, or reduce for all this real ways and bias. Okay. Um, yeah, and same thing for this. And all this example, you can run this example either uh, by requesting uh, in by doing the interactive mode, um, or you can just submit the job to Theta or Theta GPU. So you can see by submission screen, uh, script in the GitHub repo. Okay, um, I think this is all the contents I have. Um, we let me go back to the three objectives. Check, we can check whether we we arrive all of it. The model power first is the understanding the model parallelization and data parallelization. Right, I mentioned that the model parallelization is not very generic. Um, there's no generic framework to do that. Uh, it's more problem specific. And the data prioritization, we have Horva to do that. And the code to, to modify the code um, 
to implement the whole by is very easy. Um, just a few lines of actual code, then you can run on, on, on the supercomputer, right? And then we do see that by running more GPUs, we reduce the total time. Okay, so that's all the contents I have. Sorry for the five minutes uh, time. Um, I use five minutes more. Um, I can take question on the Slack um, if you have.